Embattled Yahoo CEO Marissa Meyer says she hopes to be with the company at this time next year. Meyer made headlines when she left her job at Google in 2012 to head Yahoo. It made her one of the most prominent women in Silicon Valley. Expectations were high in 2014. Vanity Fair even called her Yahoo's geek goddess. But now questions over leadership and the direction of the country are clouding Yahoo's future. The company is expected to cut hundreds of jobs and may be exploring a possible sell. I spoke with her last night on my PBS program about what had gone wrong and what she could do to fix it. Hello, MGTOW Speciation here. My inspiration for this video came from reading an article about Marisa Meyer. If you're not familiar with who she is, she used to be the CEO of Yahoo. If you don't know who Yahoo is, well, that's because she was the CEO of it. Now, to put matters into more perspective, she actually had a leadership position in Google before jumping to Yahoo. So the wave of destruction caused by this woman is responsible for damage to multiple companies, not just one. When she first got the CEO position, they were writing all over the place all these flamboyant articles about how amazing she is, how brilliant she is, how bold she is. It was easy to do so. She was a woman, she was a CEO, and there was no way to gauge her performance. So all these articles were just propping her up, making her into a giant hero. As time went on though, she started steering the company towards disaster. She quickly became the least likable CEO in tech, a compilation that took into account over 250,000 ratings showed that she performed the worst of all public tech companies. We're talking about 50 cities and 25 in different industries. To those that know leadership, it came in as no surprise as they raised concern about her leading style, including her requesting that remote workers move back into the office, always arriving late at meetings and micromanaging everything. In 2016, she managed to bring Yahoo to its lowest morale due to her employees' lack of faith in her abilities. Here's a quote from a high-ranking vice president of Yahoo. Marisa is the type of boss that makes you feel like you're disappointing her all the time, so I always feel like I'm on the verge of being fired. But no worry, she's a woman, and what do women do when they fail? Well, they shift responsibility. They blame men, they blame the planet's alignment, the zodiac for that year. You get my idea. Anything goes as long as it's not her fault. Millions of women came to her aid and they started inventing words like glass cliff. They love playing with semantics and uh, words when something goes wrong or the reality is too hard. They invent new words to somehow still blame the men for their failure. If they are masters at something, they are masters at shedding responsibility at a macro level and at a mi micro level. They quickly shift the blame on others. They're so good at it, they almost make an art out of it. The female art of shifting personal responsibility has been fine-tuned over the decades. They have learned that as long as their gender shifts the blame from one person to another and then eventually placing it on someone outside their female gender, more specifically a male, they will not have to embrace the ultimate responsibility, even though the result means that nothing great will ever be accomplished. Screw accomplishments, who needs those when we can have entitlements? As long as we look like we appear that we are taking responsibility without actually really taking it, everything's fine. First step in uh, shifting blame and not taking responsibility would be the post-question approach. The trick here is to not ask questions before the deadline. Leave everything shady and cloudy so that after the deadline has passed, you ask clarifying questions. If you ask the clarifying questions before, you would be held accountable. So wait till it's over, then act smart and ask questions. Another technique would be to use the them approach. Paint the picture that an evil and untouch untouchable force out there pulls all the strings. Call it patriarchy or mas masculinity and blame everything on it. By doing this, you nullify your own responsibility. This is genius because if the plan works, you have executed despite this made up monster and you're a hero. If it doesn't work, it's not your fault. Either way, you cannot lose. Another technique would be the broken structure approach. This one's easy. Grab a whiteboard, place your pretty face in front of it, open your cleavage a bit, and start drawing circles intersecting each other. Then claim that things would have been so much better if they were structured that way. The more you demonize the current situation, the better you are. Another technique you can use is the lateral approach. 
Now, this one's very easy in 2018. Blame the men in your team. If possible, tire, uh, target new hired men and simply blame them for it. No one will dare questioning your woman inside as they will be deemed sexist and patriarchal assholes. If all of the above fails, just call yourself a mother with duties at home and claim that life is hard and overwhelming for a woman. Should you get uh, cornered and you're about to lose your job, well, then you have the ace in the sleeve. Just claim a me too moment and get that boss fired. Who the hell is he to tell you how to do your job? These are just a few tips, ladies. I have faith in you. You have brought the blame uh, shifting uh, to an art and I know you'll be developing it for many years to come. Your resourcefulness when it comes to doing nothing, shifting blame and acquiring honored resources knows no limit. Thank you for listening, MGTOWs. May tomorrow find you a better man.